In this video, I'll show you how to undervolt your CPU to reduce heat and increase performance. My name is Amin and this channel is all about showing you how to become an IT pro really fast. Let's get started. The more intense tasks you carry out on your PC, the more your CPU heats up. It becomes more noticeable while playing demanding games, editing videos, rendering heavy projects, or other similar tasks. But if your CPU is poorly ventilated or the thermal paste on it has worn out, your CPU will overheat anyhow. If your PC fans are triggering more often and you are facing a decrease in overall performance, then before going for a new machine, you can try to undervolt your CPU. Maybe this is all that you need. Before moving on to the undervolting process, let me clear some of the doubts that you might have. Let's first understand what is undervolting in a nutshell. Undervolting is a process through which voltage to computer processors and components is decreased dynamically on runtime. Now let's see why should you undervolt your CPU. Simply, the more power sent to the CPU, the hotter it gets as undervolting reduces the amount of voltage directed to your CPU. Your CPU consumes less power and hence it runs cooler. Another advantage of undervolting for laptop users is that it drastically extends battery life. Let's discuss the pros and cons of undervolting your CPU. It increases the shelf life of system components. It helps the system to run at low temperatures so the PC feels comfortable to use for longer. It increases the system's performance as your CPU will not have to decrease its performance to keep itself cool. It increases the battery life of your laptop as the components draw less power. The only downside of undervolting is that it doesn't impact the hardware but can cause the system to crash if not done correctly. For a successful undervolting, follow these 4 steps. The first step is to do a CPU stress test and monitor CPU temperature under full load. The second step is undervolting. In the third step, we repeat the CPU stress test and monitor CPU temperature under full load. And the last step is to check if your system runs stable or not. To monitor CPU temperature, I'll use CoreTemp. You can download it from this webpage. The link is available in the description. Let me just quickly download and install it. After installing CoreTemp, open it. Under Options, select Settings. Under General, check Enable Logging on Startup and Start CoreTemp with Windows. Go to Display, check Start CoreTemp Minimized and close CoreTemp to the Notification Area. Go to Notification Area, select Highest Temperature and here check Processor Frequency and Processor Load. I am also changing the color to make it more visible. After doing all these settings, you will see these numbers on the taskbar. Now it's time to test your CPU. You can do a stress test using Cinebench, User Benchmark or any other software that puts a load on your CPU. As I use this PC to edit videos, I'll render a video as it will give me the reference that suits my work the best. As you can see, that my CPU temperature rises up to 98 degrees Celsius and my CPU clock speed drops. This happened because when your cooling system can no longer dissipate heat fast enough to keep temperatures within a safe range, your CPU starts to dump performance to shed heat. So in my case, the maximum temperature is 98 degrees Celsius and the minimum clock speed is 2.6 GHz. If you are a gamer, it's best to monitor CPU temperature while playing a heavy game. For that, you can use MSI Afterburner. You can download it from this webpage. The link is also available in the description. Let me just quickly download and install it. Now open MSI Afterburner and click on this settings button. Then go to monitoring tab. From this list, look for CPU temperature. Select it and check this option, show in on-screen display. Now look for CPU usage. Select it 
and check this option. Now look for CPU clock. Select it and check this option. And at last look for frame rate. Activate it. Select it and check this option. Now click on apply and then OK. Remember, if you close after burner, it will not work. So just minimize it and launch a heavy game. So here, as you can see, I am playing Fortnite and the CPU temperature is around 90 degrees Celsius. And because of that, my CPU is running at a low clock speed. But sometimes this temperature gets up to 98 degrees Celsius. Now it's time to do some undervolting magic. To undervolt your CPU, download Throttle Stop from this web page. Make sure to go for the stable version. And as always, the link is also available in the description. After downloading Throttle Stop, go to your downloads folder and extract it. Now copy and paste it into your C drive. Now launch Throttle Stop, click on OK. This is the interface of Throttle Stop. Here you need to change some settings. Check this high performance checkbox and click on this FIVR button. Make sure CPU core is selected. Under CPU core voltage, check unlock adjustable voltage. Select to 50 millivolts and change offset voltage to minus 140.6. You can also use these buttons. Then check this option save voltages immediately. Now select CPU cache, check unlock adjustable voltage and change offset voltage to minus 140.6 and click on OK. These values work great for me. But if your system is not stable after setting these values, try changing these values in small increments from minus 100.6 to minus 140.6. Now go to TPL. Here you need to look at this value. In my case it is 45. This value represents thermal design power TDP, sometimes called thermal design point, which is the maximum amount of heat generated by a computer chip or component. In our case it's CPU. We have to set this value to a lower number. Uncheck disable power limit control. I am changing both these values to 38. Then check speed shift and I am changing this value to 40. Click on apply and then ok. And you are done. You have successfully undervolted your CPU. Now it's time to restart your PC. After restarting your PC, launch throttle stop and you will see this icon at the taskbar indicating that throttle stop is running. Now you have to do a CPU stress test and monitor its temperature. I will again render that same video. Wow! As you can see both stress tests side by side. On the left is before undervolting and on the right is after undervolting and the difference is in front of you. Now the temperature and clock speed are in control and this time the video also rendered in a little less time. But there is a problem. You will need to launch throttle stop every time you restart or turn on your PC. To start it automatically. Follow these simple steps. Search for Task Scheduler and open it. Click on Task Scheduler Library and create a basic task. I'll rename it as Throttle Stop and click on Next. When do you want the task to start? Select When I log on and click on Next. What action do you want the task to perform? Make sure it is set to Start a program and click on Next. Now click on Browse. Navigate to Throttle Stop location and select Throttle Stop application and click on Next. Now check this checkbox and click on Finish. Here check this checkbox Run with highest privileges and from this drop down select Windows 10. Now go to Conditions tab. Make sure all these boxes are checked and click on OK. And you are done. Now whenever you restart or turn on your PC, your throttle stop will run automatically. This is how you can undervolt your CPU. What temperatures did you get? Please share with us in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. I'll see you in the next video.